Hello, welcome back. This is the third installment of a video series on how to frame a room. If you haven't watched the first two videos, be sure to check those out before you get started. The first one is on how to frame a wall, and then the second one on how to frame windows and doors. So we're going to be using a lot of the same principles that applied in those videos to how to frame closets and how to frame soffits. So let's take a look at this closet to see how it's built to get started, and then we'll move on to soffits afterward. All right, laying out a closet is really just like laying out a small room. You have the same basic pieces. We've got four walls, and in most cases, you're gonna have a door. Some closets have no door, they're just an open entry. Uh, most of the time, you're not gonna have a window of any sort, but the rest of it is really the same. So we've already, in this case, I'm looking at a closet that I built earlier this week, and to show you in this video how to do a closet, we're gonna finish framing the closet on the other side of this wall. So these are two back-to-back -back closets um, right next to each other. So we'll take a look. Really, you're just doing a door frame and you're doing your four walls. And a lot of times, those two of those walls or more will already be done, as was the case in this closet here. One thing to keep in mind is you have to know beforehand what type of doors you're going to be putting in. There are bifold doors, there's double doors, there's French doors, there's different types. There's the kind that slide next to each other. So make sure you understand and have chosen what types of doors you're gonna have and that you have the measurements of the outside frame of those doors. Just like with any other door, like we showed in our last video, you're going to want to leave about a half inch of space on either side. So if you have a, a double door like I'm doing in this one, and I've got about a 72 inch measurement, then you want to leave a 73 inch opening to make sure you have enough room to hang the door properly. Let's go ahead and frame a closet and show you how it's done. You can see that the three walls that are built here are just the same type of walls that we showed in the first video. You've got your top plate, bottom plate, and some studs. So what I'm doing now is building the outside wall that'll have the door. I take my measurements and create a bottom plate and then the top plates. The bottom plates in this case are just a couple of small pieces of pressure treated lumber. And then I get my measurements from them, from those two pieces to the joists on the ceiling so I can cut my studs. And just like any door frame, I'm gonna have king studs, jack studs, and then my full size studs that go on the outsides of those. And then I'll have a couple of cripple studs above the headers that are made out of two by sixes. So here I'm getting all my measurements and making all the cuts, and there's my uh, headers. And then I'm gonna lay everything out on the floor, and I've got to make all my marks, and then I'm gonna lay out my outside studs. There's the king studs and jack studs, and then in come the header studs as well. Then I'm gonna tack everything together and make sure everything's fitting properly. I did end up with a little bit of a gap on either side of the headers, uh, but that can be filled with some OSB or other filler. And then I've also got the half inch piece in between those two to make sure that they're spaced evenly. And then once I've got everything tacked, I'm tacked up, I'm ready to go ahead and stand it up and make sure that everything is level. So I'm kicking those into place and then I'm gonna go ahead and take a level to it and then once it's level I can tack it into place to the surrounding walls and then also drive my ram set nails into the concrete floor. Alright so there's another closet done and basically we just did the door like I mentioned the walls in this case three of the walls were, were already done so that makes it easy. Um, we had to make sure to put our cripples in here, cripple studs they are, in this case, I lucked out and they were exactly one and a half inches, so I could just lay a couple of boards down and tack them in. That worked out nicely. And then we've got our king studs and our jack studs and our headers. So everything came together nicely. Now we're gonna go ahead and do some soffits. Okay, now as we get started with soffits, there's three things we need to keep in mind. The first is that a soffit is really quite a simple structure. It's a lot like the rooms that we've already built, the walls and things like that. You've got a wall right here, essentially. This is called a ladder but the rungs are just made up of studs that are vertical, a top plate, and a bottom plate. Okay, so it's pretty simple, pretty familiar hopefully. Underneath, we've got cross pieces, and those connect to another ladder on the other side. So all in all, it's a pretty simple structure. So just think of it like another small room with cross pieces connecting the floor. Then the second thing you wanna remember is that when you're making your measurements, those measurements are for the inside of the soffit. So I need to get around, for example, my duct here and a gas line right here. So I'm gonna find out what those measurements are here and that becomes the inside. So I'm gonna to have to add onto that three and a half inches for my wall here, for my ladder, um, on the width. And then another inch and a half on the height for the bottom right here for the cross piece. So that's another thing to keep in mind. The third thing that you wanna remember is that there's easier ways and harder ways to connect these cross pieces 
to here. What I found is that's easiest is assembling this whole thing on the ground and then toenailing in from the sides. So I'm going to drive a nail in right here and right here. When I've tried to do this in the past where I tried to toenail in from the top while it's on the ground or even from the bottom while it's up in the air like this, I end up getting nails that go all the way through and don't ever connect with my ladder. So I find that it's easiest just to do sides. And so that's what works for me. And if you find something different, let me know. So soffits are really pretty simple. Let's go ahead and build one and take a look at the process. First thing we need to do is get our measurements of everything we're going to wrap inside the soffit. And then we need to add our three and a half inches to the outside and inch and a half underneath for the width and height of the wood. Once we've got all our measurements, we'll make our cuts and then we're ready to lay it out. So here what I'm doing is marking every two feet on center where the rungs of the ladder will go. This is the layout for the ladder that's going to be on the side of the soffit. So I've got those all put together. I'm going to put the rungs in and then I'm going to get out the nail gun and put this all together with my six penny nails. Once I've got everything put together, oh by the way, I do have joints together on this one. I ended up taking that apart. I always recommend that you stagger the joints. I just wasn't thinking about it at the time. Then when you're ready to hang it, I've got a little hook which we'll talk about in just a minute. And then I can hook one side in and then on the other side, as soon as I get it to the spot that I've marked beforehand, I can go ahead and tack that up with the nail gun and then walk back over to where the hook was and start to get that lined up and then I can finish securing the whole thing. Once I have the ladders up, I'm ready to put my cross pieces up. And so I just get my measurement from the wall to the ladder in this case. And then what I've got there along the wall is a two by four cut in half down the middle. So it's basically a one and a half inch by one and a half inch piece, about one and three quarters by one and a half. And that makes doing wall pieces much easier. And then on the open section, like you see here, I've just got a ladder on either side. So then I just need to take my measurements from my cross pieces and start to put them in. So I'm making my cuts here and then doing the toenailing in just like I showed earlier as I put all the cross pieces in all the way through. Okay, we're done with soffits and I'm really excited because I'm actually done framing my whole basement. So I've got everything done. We've done the walls, we've done the soffits, we've done the doors, we've done the windows, the closets, everything. So everything's looking good. Um, one other tip, if I can find one, here we go. I've got these, uh, these little boards that I use um, as a hook. I use them as a hanger. You can see this one's got lots of nails because I've used it quite a bit, but you may have seen in some of the videos, I'll actually just nail it onto the ceiling and that way when I need to hang a large soffit like a 12 footer like this and don't want to try to hold the whole thing up and nail it when it's just me working down here, use a hook, hook it on there, um, put it on one side, come over to the other, put it in place and create one nail with a pivot that creates a pivot and then you can tack all the rest of them in place once you've um, once you've used your level and made sure everything's looking good. So from this point, I'm going to go ahead and start working on the rest of my basement. I've got a lot of systems to put in place. I've got electrical to do. I've got HVAC to do. I've got insulation. I've got audio video. And I'm probably forgetting a couple too. So there's a lot more to go still. And I'll be making YouTube videos all along the way of the whole process. So watching, subscribe. I'll talk to you soon.